this video I'm going to use the Hungarian method to find the optimal assignment given the cost matrix which is appearing on the right there. So we have that cost matrix where we have four people and four jobs. So we want to make the assignment that minimizes costs. So using the Hungarian method, what we do is we find the lowest element for each row. So looking at row number one, the smallest element there is a 54. Row number two, the lowest element is an 11. Row number three, the lowest element is a 9. Row number four, the lowest element is a 3. Then go on and subtract the elements that I have circled there from each element in that row. So we'll draw another table where we have the jobs and the people. And we are looking at row number one. So for row number one, we are subtracting 54, the highlighted element there. So we would have 92 minus 54, it gives us a 38. 77 minus 54, it gives us a 23. 64 minus 54, it gives us a 10. 54 minus 54, it gives us a 0. We move on to row number 2. Row number 2, we are subtracting 11 from each and every element in that row. So we have 11 minus 11 gives us a 0. 55 minus 11 gives us a 44. 17 minus 11, it gives us a 6. 18 minus 11, it gives us a 7. Go to the third row. We are subtracting the highlighted element there, the 19. 19 minus 19, it gives us a 0. 88 minus 19, it gives us a 69. 54 minus 19, it gives us a 35. 20 minus 19, it gives us a 1. Go to row number 4. We are subtracting that highlighted element, the 3. So 3 minus 3 gives us a 0. 48 minus 3 it gives us a 45. 8 minus 3, it gives us a 5. 57 minus 3, it gives us a 54. So that's uh, the table that we now have. And we will now go on to on the next step. The next step is now to find the lowest element for each column. So look at the columns, find the lowest element. For column number one, the lowest element is a zero. For column number two, the lowest element is a 23. For column number three, the lowest element is a five. For column number four, the lowest element is a zero. We then go on and subtract each of the highlighted elements from the elements in that column. So when we are looking at uh, column number one there, we are having a zero, we'll just be subtracting zero. So all the elements in uh, column number one are not changing. So we draw another table where we have the four people and the four jobs. So as I said, for column number one, we are having the lowest element is a zero. Subtracting zero does not change those elements. So I'll just write them as they are, the 38, the zero, and the zero, the zero. For column number two, the lowest element is the 23 that is highlighted there. So we are subtracting 23 from all the elements in this column here. So it will be 23 minus 23 gives us a 0. 44 minus 23 gives us a 21. 69 minus 23 gives us a 46. 45 minus 23 gives us a 22. Now move on to the third column. The third column, the highlighted uh, element there is a 5. So we are subtracting 5 from elements in this column here. So we'll be saying 10 minus 5 gives us a 5. 6 minus 5 gives us a 1. 35 minus 5 gives us a 30. 5 minus 5 gives us a 0. Move on to column number 4. For column number 4, we are subtracting 0. Subtracting 0 does not change those elements. So I'll just rewrite the elements in this column as they are. And we have 0, 7, 1, and a 54. So this is a on the table that we are having there, I'll then go on and put it on the left hand side there so that we go on to the next step. For the next step, we try to examine the rows successively until a row with exactly one unmarked zero is found. Then go on and mark this zero with a circle as an assignment to be made there and cross out all other zeros in this column. So if we try to look at uh, the row number one there, it does not have one zero. So we check the next one. 
row number two. Row number two has one zero. So we can put a circle there on that zero. And the method says we cross out all other zeros in this column. We saw we are crossing out all other zeros in column number one. So cross this one out, cross this one out. But when you cross uh, this zero out, we will now have exactly one zero in row number four there. So we can make an allocation there. So we can make an allocation here on this point. So we are now done with the rows. There are no longer any rows that have exactly one zero. So we can move to the next step, which is uh, to examine the columns successively until a column with exactly one unmarked zero is found. Then mark this zero with a circle as an assignment will be made there and cross out all other zeros in this row. So in this case, we are looking for a column which is exactly one zero. So for the column which is exactly one zero, we have this column two here. So we can put a circle there to indicate we will make an allocation there. But the moment we make that allocation, we then have to cross out all other zeros in this row. So we have to cross out this zero. So I cross out that zero there. So what we are now having, we have either crossed out zeros or made an allocation. But the challenge that we are having there is person number three does not have an assignment. If we check it does, it's only have a crossed out zero. It doesn't have a circle to indicate an assignment. So if we are having a, a person not having an assignment, then we haven't reached the optimal solution yet. Both for the optimal solution, each and every person should be allocated a job. Then we go to the next step. So what you do is you redraw the table without the allocations that we had made previously. So that's the table there without the allocations and the crossing out. So what we need to do there is to draw the minimum number of horizontal and vertical lines to cover the zeros. And to draw these uh, horizontal and vertical lines, what we do is we look at the row or column with the most number of zeros. That's the one that we start to cover first. In this case, we see that column number one is three zeros. So that's the one that we cover first and to, to cover those, all those zeros, we would use a vertical line. So I'll just cover it there. We have covered the zeros. Then we can cover the other zeros that are remaining. We look at the one which has the most number of zeros. We see that uh, row number one there has two zeros. So we can try to cover those zeros. I'll cover them with a horizontal line so that we have the two of them covered there. And now we only have one zero which is left, which is not covered. We can cover it with a horizontal or a vertical line. But I prefer covering with the horizontal line first. So I can just cover it with the horizontal line there. So we have all the zeros are now covered. We now go on to the next step. We select the smallest element from all the uncovered elements. The uncovered elements there are 21, 1, 7, 46, 30, and 1. And the smallest element there is a 1. So I'll circle the smallest element. It's a 1. The method says that we should subtract this smallest element from all the uncovered elements and add it to the elements which lie at the intersection of two lines. So we we'll obtain another table there. So I'll draw a table which has the four people and the four jobs. So we look at the elements there. If we look at this 38 here, it's lying at the intersection of those two horizontal and vertical lines. So the method says we add the one, the smallest element. So 38 plus one gives us a 39. And the other elements, the zero, five, zero, we don't do anything to them. We write them as they are. So it will be zero, five, zero. We then go on to the next row. We have a zero there. It's just a covered element. We just write it as it is. The 21 there is an uncovered element. For uncovered elements, we subtract the smallest element. So it's a one. So it's be 21 minus one. It gives us a 20. One minus one. It gives us a zero. 7 minus 1, it gives us a 6. Look at row number 3. It is starting with a covered element as 0. So we just write it as it is. The uncovered elements, we are subtracting a 1. For 46, we will be saying 46 minus a 1, it gives us a 45. 30 minus 1, it gives us a 29. 1 minus 1, it gives us a 0. 
Then we go on to the next when you are now looking at row number 4. Row number 4 is starting with a 0 there, which is at the intersection of two lines there. So at the intersection, we add a 1. So it will be 0 plus 1, which is, gives us a 1 there. And then the other elements, we are just having 22, 0, 54. So we just write them as they are 22, 0, 54. So what we are now having is uh, this uh, matrix here. We now go on and try to make allocations there. So we examine the rows successively until a row with exactly one unmarked zero is found. Then we go on and mark this zero with a circle as an assignment to be made there and cross out all other zeros in this column. So look for a row with exactly one zero. We see that a row number four here is one zero. So we circle that to indicate we'll make an allocation there. Then we would have to cross out all other zeros in this column. So we'd have to cross out this zero. So I'll cross it out. But when you cross out this zero, we will now have exactly one zero in this row. Therefore, we can make an allocation on that one zero. So we can make an allocation on this zero here. But when you make an allocation on that zero, the method says we cross out all other zeros in that column. So cross out the zeros in this column. So we have to cross out this zero here. When you cross out this zero, row number three now has exactly one zero. And if it is exactly one zero, then you can make an allocation there. And when we make an allocation there, the method says we have to cross out all other zeros in this column. So we have to cross out this zero. So cross it out here. And when you cross out this zero, that means row number one here now has exactly one zero. If it is exactly one zero, we make an allocation there. So we make an allocation on this zero. So we are now done with uh, the allocations. We just check the matrix there. We see that each and every person is having an allocation. Person one has job two, person two has job one, person three has job four, person four has job three. So we now need to consult the original cost matrix that we had at the beginning, which was showing the cost, and that uh, cost matrix was this one here. And uh, from uh, this uh, table here, what we are saying is person one, we are allocating job number two, but from the original cost matrix, it costs 77. For person number two to do job number one, it costs the 11 there, when you are looking at the original cost matrix, for person number three, to do job number four, it costs 20. For person number four, to do job number three, it costs eight. So those are the allocations and the costs. So what we now need to do is just to draw a table where we have the people and their allocations and the costs so that we get the total cost for the assignment problem. So we have a person one, we are allocating job number two. Job number two at a cost of 77. So write the cost, and we are saying the cost is 77. Person number two, we are allocating job number one. Job number one at a cost of 11, the one which is highlighted. So I write the 11 there. Person number three, we are allocating a job number four. Job number four at a cost which is highlighted there, the 20. Person number four, we are allocating job number Three. A job number three at the cost which is highlighted there is an eight. And uh, we add these values to get the total cost for the assignment problem. So the total cost there is 116. So what we are having there, the Hungarian method is giving us that the optimal solution there is a cost of 116. So what we are having there, that's the assignment that minimizes the cost.